how much does it really cost to live in the Tampa Bay area? Hi, I'm Mark from the Fazzini Group and we make these videos so that you can make informed decisions about buying or selling in the Tampa Bay area. Now we do have a real estate team and we help hundreds of clients each year. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions about the market, areas to target, or the general buying or selling process, please reach out. Okay, so if you're moving from another area of the country, you probably have started researching the cost of living in the Tampa Bay area. Now, moving to Florida is typically known for having tax savings, right? Because people from other states can move down and they have no income tax. So that's one large thing that people consider when they're moving down to Florida. But what is it really like in the Tampa Bay area? Is it more expensive than where you are now? Is it cheaper? We're gonna get into all that in the video. And now I'm not gonna talk about other areas of the country, but this will give you an idea of what Tampa is like as far as cost of living so you can compare to where you are or other areas that you're considering. Okay, so let's talk about the first main topic of cost of living, housing. So housing in the Tampa Bay area has gone up significantly over the last three to five years. The rush of demand from the work at home culture and people being able to move anywhere in the country has really increased demand in our area. And we've seen that with our home prices. Now the median home sale last year was 315,000 and the average rent was 1600 a month. However, this is a bit skewed because this takes into all sorts of property types, condos, single family homes, townhomes. So we are seeing a bit higher prices, like closer to the 400, 450 for an average home. And the rents, it is hard to find rents under 1600. We're seeing most rentals, even condos go for 1800 plus, most single family homes around that 2000 plus mark. And if you're like our average buyer who's looking for a four bedroom home with a pool and a great school district, those prices are typically gonna be over 600,000. So it obviously depends on the area that you're looking, your budget, and you know what your goals are with the process. But when we think of it on a national level, the Tampa home values are typically a little bit more affordable than other areas of the country like California or New York. So that is one good thing about our area. Housing prices are not through the roof like some other areas of the country. So when you're talking about houses, you will know your cost of the house you're purchasing. What else do you have to consider? Well, of course, the big one, property taxes. Property taxes typically are about 1.25% of the sale price of the home. So on many homes, you will be you know, in that six to 800,000 range. You're gonna be looking at property taxes you know, anywhere from 6,000 a year to, you know, 10 or 12,000 a year, depending on where you're going. Now, the other big cost, home insurance. So for home insurance, the average cost is about 0.5% of the home price. And that's going to cover your homeowner's insurance. If you have to add flood insurance, it really depends on the area, the property. I would say most people, if, if you're not super close to the water, but you're in a flood zone, you might be paying anywhere from two to 3,000 a year. If you're right on the water, open golf views, you know, it could be higher like 6,000, 10,000 plus a year. So you have to really know where you're at and of course get those, get those quotes and understand what your costs are gonna be. And when you're purchasing a home, you also have to factor in closing costs. If you're getting a loan, your closing costs are typically around 3% of the home purchase price. Depending on the market and the property, you can negotiate those to be paid by the seller. And if you're paying cash, those costs are gonna be much less minimal, you know, maybe a thousand to $2,000 max. Okay, now another factor for cost of living is transportation. So if you're coming from a big metropolitan area with public transit, you might not be used to the Tampa area where you're gonna most likely have to have a car and pay your car payment, car insurance, all of that. So if you're used to just walking around a city, yes, you could do some of that in downtown Tampa, but most of our areas are gonna require a car because we don't have a bunch of public transit. So car payment and car insurance obviously depend a lot on the car you have, but most people have car payments, you know, anywhere from 200 a month to 600 a month and car insurance costs. Now it can get really crazy in downtown Tampa and if you have a, a really nice sports car, but I would say, you know, average uh, car insurance costs are gonna be 100, 200 a month. So other costs to consider, we have food. Food in the Tampa Bay area is going to be pretty in line with the national averages. 
just like many of you have probably seen, grocery costs have gone up quite a bit in the last few years. When you're going out to eat at restaurants, the average meal is probably around $15. If you're going out for like a three course meal at a nicer restaurant, you could easily spend $60 to $100 for two people. You know, personally, when I go out with my family, we go to a lot of local spots. Pricing can be a little bit better. Food quality is great. That's, that's always a personal preference, but food costs are pretty in line with other areas of the country. You might even find them to be a little more affordable. Now, another area where we spend a lot of our money is uh, fun and entertainment. So in the Tampa area, the good thing is there are a ton of things to do that are free, going to the beaches, going to parks. So that's not gonna cost you any money and might provide a great lifestyle for you. If you're going out to go bowling, go to a movie, go to an event, go to a lightning game or a bucks game, you're going to find that the costs are pretty much in line with other areas of the country. So if you're going out for the day with your family, you're gonna probably be looking at spending, you know, 50 to $100 on whatever you're gonna go do, but you get a lot of different options in this area because of the beautiful weather and all of the outdoor activities that don't cost a lot of money. Now, other costs that you'll have when owning a home are, are pretty nominal, but things like cable and internet, pest control, security can, you know, systems, pool care, lawn care, those, those are pretty in line with the national averages. Most of my clients are paying around 50 to 100 bucks a month for pool care. Lawn care can be 100 to 150 a month. Pest control, 50 or so a month, depending on what you're doing. And then cable and internet, um, of course, you know, can vary greatly, but can be a few hundred bucks a month, depending on what you're doing. So all those are very personal expenses. I, I think you're going to find that most are in line with the national averages or what you're used to, but all things to consider when you're looking at affordability of a home you're purchasing. And then finally, depending on the community where you're buying a home, you have to be aware of any other fees associated with the purchase. So some areas of Tampa will have CDD fees that will go onto your tax bill and increase your, your yearly expenses. Some communities have HOA fees that are high. You really need to know what those include and you know make sure that you're not gonna get a special assessment. Besides those things, you really just have to look at your situation, look at the area you're gonna be in, whether you're commuting to work, whether you're commuting to schools, you just have to understand the general lifestyle that you're going to be in and know what expenses are gonna be associated with that. So if you've watched the end, you're probably considering buying a home in the Tampa Bay area. We have a great real estate team. We'd love to hear from you and help in any way we can. If you have questions about areas to look for, the buying process, the selling process, or how to make all of that happen, please reach out to us. You can call us, email us, or text us at any time. We'd love to help.